The following ACT prose fiction or literary narrative passage question is asking about the way that the uh, author sees herself in the passage as a whole. It's very difficult when they ask about this. Um, just keep in mind everything that you've read. Um, and even if there won't be topic sentences, think of a time where um, the answer choices lead you to something that occurred in the passage. For this answer, it looks like the majority of answer choices can be considered um, thoroughly with this paragraph that I've included here, so let's just consider this one together, the one starting with the legs and ending with death. Uh, the author sees her role <clears throat> in the passage as a superior life form. Well, definitely we don't know this. We know that in the first paragraph, the uh, author does say um, that it seems almost pathetic how um, this, you know, insect, this moth, it, it attempts to enjoy its life so much. Um, but it doesn't necessarily imply that she feels superior. Uh, we see later in the passage, um, and from the very beginning, right, you know, the, the same life energy that motivates moth also motivates the birds, the horses, uh, everything outside. And then it says, as it struggled to get back on its feet, one could only watch the extraordinary efforts made by those tiny legs. This is over here. Uh, against an uncommon doom which could, had it chosen, have submerged an entire city. Not merely a city, but masses of human beings. I knew nothing, uh, or sorry, nothing I knew, had any chance against death. So, what this moth is facing, death, can also be faced by humans. Not just a city of humans, but countless human beings. Uh, basically, everybody. Uh, so this moth faces a problem that people face too. We try to be happy and we struggle for survival against uh, something that is, you know, that we're equally incapable of overcoming. So we're not necessarily superior. We struggle just as a moth does. And we have that same life energy. If all living things outside, when she looks at the window, have it. Um, and then all living things can't survive forever. It seems that this includes humans. So she's not a superior life form. An active participant in the moth's death. Definitely not. Uh, she's not, you know what the problem with this is? So yeah, she doesn't help the moth get up right away. Uh, well, you know, she does say, because she could see death coming. Um, but it's not that she helped kill it. She didn't do anything. She wasn't an active participant in the killing. This would imply, active participant would imply that she had something to do with it dying. She didn't do anything to kill the moth. So we can get rid of that one. A helpless observer. Um, this seems a little bit better. She does say here, one could only watch, it's all you can really do, the extraordinary efforts made by those tiny legs against an oncoming doom. You can't really help. It is useless to try and do anything. So we're helpless to help the moth. It's going to die. Its time has come. There's nothing we can really do to help it now. Um, so this looks like the uh, the best answer choice. Actually, this must be the right answer choice. I'm going to consider the last just in case. Untouched, untouched by the moth struggle. Oh, well, she's definitely touched by the moth struggle. She compares the moth struggle to her own struggle. She compares that life energy in the moth to the life energy in other living things. She really does care about what's going on with this moth. She spent so much time looking at it. Uh, definitely not untouched. Um, which makes answer choice here the best answer choice. I hope that helped with this problem. And happy prepping.